welcome to another show with Bill, Wendy, and Jonathan. Hello. So we are part of Carolina Capital Management. And before I get started, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe. Thumbs up. You do the thumbs up thing. Uh, any information that you need to know going forward, carolinahardmoney.com, carolinahardmoney.com. Tell all your friends. We are happy <laughs> to have Ryan Parson of Heritage Capital what well, listen, he, he has so many different entities. I don't even know which one he, he does. All I However, know is he's a dear friend and I love a, him to death. He's a wonderful guy. He's a, a trained financial planner, correct? That's right. We we we've have a, a little bit of experience, Bill, with yeah, little a, uh, some, a few things called financial planning, I guess. At least as the <laughs> traditional people so, would say we do. <laughs> Ryan runs. But don't hold that against him, <laughs> right? <laughs> Ryan runs several funds, and we'll get into those later. But before we get started with any kind of fun talk, don't be talking about funds. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. So we are not selling any securities. This is education purposes only. If you invest in any fund, there is risk involved with any investment. Uh, make sure you consult your financial advisor and or attorney, CPA, whoever you trust. You must read the PPM or your prospectus. Your mileage may vary. Okay, so <laughs> we're, we're back to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Ryan. It is great to be here with the three of you. I appreciate the invitation to join your uh, podcast here. And, uh, you know, I think back to as as long as, uh, you know, Bill and Wendy, that you, you the I've known the two of you and Jonathan over the last uh, several months have gotten to know you since you've joined uh, Carolina Capital here. It's been, you know, r really an interesting journey when you look back really the last decade in these financial markets. And mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're right, Bill, we, while we manage a lot of our own funds, <laughs> it really is what we, what we do with investors at Mile Marker Club that is really trying to help all of us as high net worth investors stay high net worth investors. That's right. <laughs> and that's, especially when you have alternative investments, which I know, you know, obviously you two run uh, great funds in the alternative investment space. We're, you know, solely focused on alternative investments. And when you've decided to, as an, a high net worth investor, and maybe for purposes of discussion today, we kind of quantify that and puts, you know, right. there's kind of three to $30 million net worth investor mm. to maybe give some context here. When you're in that space and you've decided to take full control back of your wealth, i.e. you're not abdicating it to Wall Street, you're not abdicating it to the New York Stock Exchange, you're investing in funds like what you have at Carolina Capital or what we have at you know, Heritage Capital USA, for example, an alternative access point into alternative investments, although that's namely real estate too. And so the, the, it seems to be the shift, you know, a, as we are talking about this today, it's been such a great bull run, really the last 11 years, if you think back to 2008, right. when, you know, Wendy, you and I were just talking about this last, I think oh, I, yeah. we, all three of us were talking about this last weekend at the Freedom Founders Mastermind. Right, we cried about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, we did, we did, I did. That's exactly right, is that, you know, we all became pretty wealthy this last decade, including the traditional markets have been good to those investors, which is the bulk of Americans, because that's all they have access to. It's been really good, and it's created a lot of multimillionaires, you know, myself included. The real estate market has done really, really well, but I think as we all talk about in our various different masterminds, and something we certainly talk very heavily with, very uh, succinctly with, with our Mile Marker Club members, is it doesn't last. These markets and, you know, and probably where we're at here, I guess in March of 2020, are we on borrowed time? And right. for the high net worth families that we serve, Jonathan, Bill, and Wendy, there is a very consistent sentiment out there, and, and my own included, the heyday is over. And if right. we're kidding our we'd be kidding ourselves if we thought oh this is just going to keep going and keep going and keep going so that's really probably the biggest premises that we we are operating from today inside of 
the type of wealth strategy as we do and have been working on, you know, with our members to stay financially free mm. and, and, and continue to grow it certainly to the specification of the family's wealth. But this idea of staying financially free is really, really a big deal. You know, I just had a tailor who works in our membership engagement department. I was just talking with her earlier this morning and she said, you know, Ryan, have we been getting a lot of calls about, you know, the stock market doing its, you know, gyrations, you know, the, and this uh, coronavirus that, you know, is certainly a big buzz and I don't mean to diminish it by any means because it's obviously mm -hmm. real and it's impacting families very directly in some cases mm -hmm. and really from a devastation perspective. But I said, no, Taylor, we haven't gotten one call from our members. And, and she just said, really? And I said, well, right. If we've been hopefully doing our jobs well through our training and education platforms and our planning platforms and being able to constantly see the wealth unfold in advance of it happening, you know, no one certainly would have predicted the coronavirus as we've all come to know it today. But, you know, as our, as our good friend, Mike, Big Mike talks about, you know, the black swan event. Here right. is that, you know, you, you generally, <clears throat> when you are an alternative investor and you've taken back the control to plan your own wealth, you have to build in some degree of what we call investment fluctuation reserves for the completely unknown. And, you know, as it's unfolding in front of all of us in real time today, you know, that unknown, you know, happens to be the coronavirus. And right. so it's a, unfortunate and as horrible as that is, it really is a stark reminder why we, especially as alternative investors that have taken back and, and wish to have control over our wealth, if we don't engage in some of these, you know, really important wealth strategies and build those into your model and your family investment policy. Black swan events like this can be more devastating than just, you know, the, the physical health concerns and, okay. you know, the economic concerns. It will <clears throat> harm your portfolio and, you know, potentially have to, you know, cause your financial independence to evaporate and, you know, have to go back to work. And that's a big, right. you know, thing for for our mile marker club members is that you know they're largely already financially independent or are very close to being financially free and times like this are stress testing it to make sure we can all stay financially free and that's really where i see a lot of this going if i look at you know what the next decade might look like hopefully not a whole decade of a downturn or complete volatility right. <laughs> but just this this shift in the markets as we're seeing. And so, Bill, I think that was one of your questions kind of at the beginning, how we do and, and help a family create that family investment policy to help manage or help give insights in terms of then what types of alternatives and access points of those alternatives seem to make sense based on, you know, their specifications. <laughs> so those are probably, the, you know, right, it's kind of at the forefront of the things that are on our members' minds of keeping going. Because if you're trying to figure it out now, oh my gosh, can I stay financially free when we're having this type of market turbulation? Now's not the time to ask that question. It's, it's all, if you haven't planned for it, you're already Too done. late. That's right. It's too late. <laughs> that's, right. that's exactly right. And that's, you know, why even all of us as fund managers and, and Bill and Wendy, you guys do a great job, I know, communicating with your investors and your Carolina Capital Funds is we're always talking about what we see coming down the pike as best as we can. I mean, as you, as you said so eloquently, Bill, in your uh, disclaimer, which is absolutely true, none of us have a crystal ball. You know, we're just doing the best we can to try to stay as best ahead of these curves within our area of expertise that we all have. And really, as fund managers, what we have to do for our fund and to do and working in the best interest of our fund and all of our investors in our respective funds so too is it incumbent upon us as each an individual investor to run our own wealth like we would as a fund manager. In other words, you have to run your own wealth at a professional standard, yet it's extremely difficult still today, you know, which is part of why we do what we do, because I couldn't find it even for my own wealth and our own family to, you know, to go find the, who's the wealth you know, the financial planner and using traditional speak that can help us with alternative investments. And all of us right. know 
that really doesn't exist. But yet we also know we don't want to just abdicate it to Wall Street either. So, you know, running your wealth like a business and like a, you know, we would as, as fund managers, you know, at a fund level, our wealth requires that too. Well, th this is part of the reason that we, we even do these podcasts and these video series is that there's very limited access to this space for the general public. They, it's unbelievable how many people don't even realize you can self-direct your own IRA right. <laughs> um, and get into these al alternative investments. And you were saying earlier how one of your team members is asking you, you know, are you getting any phone calls about this? And you're like, no. And it's because you have educated investors and you do an excellent job yes. of educating them. Tell me about, and by the way, that helps your stress level because you're not having to field all these calls. <laughs> and the other thing Been is, there. you know, your investors aren't stressed about yeah. it because they know the mm -hmm. path that they're on and these turbulent times in the stock market really aren't going to affect them. Now, they may have some allocation still in the stock market, but it's not their total por portfolio. Talk about how th these events you, you put on where you're educating or at least giving them the opportunity to come in and learn if they want to. Mm -hmm. So that idea, Bill, that you're bringing up about, you know, being educated is really a critical, critical piece. Frankly, I think it's true for every American, whether you've got a $10,000 net worth or, you know, a $10 billion net worth. The education and understanding, first and foremost, really nobody cares more about your money than you do. And the fin right. your financial planner doesn't, your CPA, your banker, your attorney, your stockbroker, your nobody cares more about your money than you do. And I think that's a very common mistake that we're taught to believe that, mm -hmm. oh, you know, turn it over to the stockbroker, let your 401k plan people, you know, they're the experts. And while right. at right. some <laughs> level that's true, what we have to remember, you know, over in most markets, it's a little bit higher right now because the stock market has created multimillionaires, you know, just because of the increase in the valuation. But typically, less than 5% of Americans have more than a million dollars of net worth. And let alone to sustain a million dollars of net worth over a long period of time. It's right. just part of our education system in this country is taught, you know, and by, and by the way, we're taught not to talk about money. <laughs> which is why I love this podcast taboo. that you two are doing. It's, you know, it's not taboo to talk about money and right. it's what we can all do to help each other and support each other and learn. So this idea of education, Bill, is very near and dear to our hearts and realizing that there is not a one size fits all approach right. to wealth. Well now, said. Traditional financial planning leads us to believe that you go to the stockbroker and they ask you a couple of questions. They, they say, here, do this. And it's basically one of three models is what right. it boils down to. <laughs> There's really no customization to it. That's not self-directing, by the way. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I've got a story about that that I'll share with you. But this idea of talking about wealth and education is really, really critical. I know Bill and Wendy, you belong to several masterminds. I do, you know, we are in masterminds together where you're constantly talking about this and sharing. And if you're mm -hmm. a high net worth family today and you know, going to the stock market or traditional investments, bank CDs, maybe annuities, those types of things, kind of those traditional products. If you've made a conscious decision, you know, that's not for me. Your very first step is being able to get educated and not just it's not a one-time thing. School is never out of session, you know, because otherwise right. if the moment you take your eye off the ball, you're going to lose your wealth. It's well just said. how the game is rigged, mm -hmm. so to speak. So therefore it's incumbent upon us. And, and Bill, you know, I think what you're referring to are mile marker club symposiums where, you know, our existing members get to come together and we're talking about and teaching, uh, you know, these real uh, elements du jour, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's this, these black swan events, you know, the tax laws, we've seen more tax law changes in the last 24 months than I can remember of any time that's directly impacted us, whether it's self-directed IRAs, distribution rules, beneficiary rules, so on and so right. forth there. And th those uh, types of 
things are really, really critical to understand that, you know, part of my, you know, corporate America days before I hit my financial freedom now, I guess almost a decade ago, thank God. And, you know, it's, it's still, uh, still there. You know, I got out of corporate America and, you know, a decade later, as I talked to some of my friends, if you will, back, you know, from that era of my life and talking about self-directed, it's so interesting. And this is true across the board that, you know, when people say, Oh, well, yeah, I self-direct my IRA. You know, I can pick any stock off the New York Stock Exchange that I want. <laughs> That's their idea of self-directing. And I'm like, no, no, no. Self-directed as we know it is financially free. High net worth investors know it. Go, yes, I can go invest in any stock I want to, but I can also invest in real estate. Right. I can invest in private equity funds. You cannot call your stockbroker and truly self-direct it because they're going to say, no, 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 you can't do that. Self-directed, the traditional investment industry adopted self-directing and put their definition on it in response to what we all know is a true self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. And so that just that, that understanding of what self-directing your wealth is is still vastly unknown mm -hmm. you know in the mass the marketplace as a whole and you know frankly with bill and wendy you certainly know my own story about it when i uh you know hit my financial freedom i left corporate america again almost a decade ago now was I, I had a 401k and I was with my employer for, you know, 19 years and being the good soldier and putting the max <laughs> amount into the 401k, getting my company match, thinking, woohoo, go, you know, yeah. that free money and all this and that. And, you know, I was young. And so I was, you know, investing it, investing it aggressively in whatever, you know, traditional financial planning says is an aggressive portfolio. And after 19 years, the day I walked out of the door and could truly self-direct it, Bill, yeah. I didn't have one more penny to roll out of my 401k than I had put in all of those years, more than a wow. decade's worth. Wow. Not one more penny, you guys. And I wasn't surprised. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't even mad at that point because I knew what was happening. And that's been, you know, again, almost a decade ago now and been one of the biggest catalysts towards financial freedom. And remember, guys, traditional financial planning says, well, if you go long, go the long term, you're going to be OK. Right. And, you know, we as fund managers talk about that with our passive private sure. investors, too. Sure. You know, we're investing for the long haul. It just has a completely different connotation because the long haul for me, you know, 15 plus years did nothing for me, right. did absolutely nothing. So I think the lesson there for me was, yes, I was passive. Yes, I was for the long haul. Yes, I had turned it over to the supposed experts. I did everything except I wasn't watching it. Right. I was not organized at all to really know what I was investing. I was not organized at all in such a way to be able to really understand, hmm, what if I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to actually become financially free? Because of course, right. everyone tells me you got to go to 65. And I, <laughs> but I never got to stop to really ask myself and because therefore I wasn't watching it. And that was really what stemmed what we know today at Mile Marker Club and what we teach at our symposiums, Bill, what we, and, and, and Wendy, you heard me, you know, talking about this in a lot of different contexts and venues is what we call wealth organization mm. and truly, you know, being organized with your wealth, especially with your alternative investments that you have to know the data. You've got to know your tax basis. And by the way, I'm not a CPA. I don't even play one on TV. I'm not a tax <laughs> expert. But, you know, if you're not, what I have learned a little bit about taxes is that my CPAs are already telling me what already happened, i.e. Right. last year. It's not about looking forward. You know, right. they, they can't, no one can really ever tell me, well, what, you know, how does this really play out, especially with alternative investments? Because, the traditional advisory, the traditional planning space can't spell alternative. They can't spell <laughs> real estate the way we spell it right. and the way we control it. And once, so that's a big part of what we teach and provide the tools to become really well organized to understand the confines of your wealth so you can make new forward-looking decisions right. 
and try to anticipate some of your taxes ahead of time and have more of a plan to then go back to your other advisors with and say, here's what we're thinking, here's what we're doing, here's some of the numbers that we've generally run. Now, what do you think, you know, in terms of this? So we're always thinking about planning and being organized mm -hmm. with living our own best life, you know, in the, you know, looking through the windshield, not looking through the rear view mirror. Right. And so that's a, you know, a big, you know, a big part of what we teach and, and, you know, trying to spread the message as best as we can. And you, you two have been working with alternative investments and private investors as long as I have. It's not for everyone. And what I've learned a little bit, unfortunately, is that it's not for most people. Most people are not going to do this because the traditional way of thinking has got such a stronghold on them. So true. Mm -hmm. They're never going to step <laughs> out. And it's okay. It's not for yeah. everyone. But it can be for anyone who wants it and anyone Amen. who realizes that abdicating the wealth is a plan for no financial freedom. And, you know, Wendy, you, you shared at the Freedom Founders Mastermind just last week at, at your talk, which was amazing. And I, I didn't Thank know you. some Thank of you. those details, but it's a very powerful story that you shared to go, you know, this stuff was happening around me and I wasn't ready for it. Right, right. And, and, you know, that was so powerful just for me to hear that just even a couple of days ago, Wendy, to remind me what is my why mm. and what is my purpose? You know, getting financially free is one thing, staying there is something completely different, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm grateful to be financially free. But my why is so much more about helping others you know, get there and stay there, assuming they're willing to put the time and the energy and the effort towards it. And, you know, so my why is really rooted on that of abundance, which was another big talk you've done along the way, Wendy, that is so powerful. And I hope your whole audience gets to hear you share some of those powerful and very potent stories. Because when, you know, you come with the mindset of abundance and just and share, 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 which we love to do around here, mm -hmm. maybe to a fault <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> is that it's the best way that I've learned to help keep all of us who want to truly be financially free and, you know, stay financially free, you know, and our, and our good friend, you know, Dr. Dr. Phelps, who runs Freedom Founders, talks about right. his other elements of freedom, you know, of time and health, but starting off financially free is, you know, a big first step and then making sure it allows you to get the rest of your freedoms that you want to be. And I, I learned to do that, Bill, through being very well organized, understanding that abdicating to Wall Street and not staying on top of your own money is a plan of disaster. It very right. rarely truly works. And so helping as many other people experience what I have been the good and the challenges. And it's, you know, it's right. hard to say, you know, 401ks, yep. <laughs> but that's my experience. It's that's yeah. just been my real life experience. So that's why I get motivated and stay up late at night and get up early in the morning to talk about this and share my experiences to try to help others, you know, live their best life. Yeah, a 401k is still better than doing nothing. And it also depends on the timing. You're getting free money from your employer. So are you telling me that you had, you got nothing more than what you put in and your employer or just you? Great question, Bill. I didn't have anything more in there than what I had contributed over 15 years worth. Okay. But for my employer contributing and, you know, paying the cost of the fees of the plan itself, and, you know, there's always going to be fees, sure. I would have lost money. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. That said, gotcha. what, what about these companies that offer a 401k, but there is no contribution from the employer? So why I'm even bringing this up, you discussed how difficult it is for some people to get into our space because it's not traditional. It's not the way the herd runs. And, you know, you start talking about it and then you typically have the, the normal amount of naysayers in your circle of influence. And 
you really have to start surrounding yourself by people that are more apt to look outside the box than right. inside the box. Otherwise, you're just going to stay in that backing up savings and not really saving anything. And there's not, again, if, if you're getting free money, do the 401k. I wouldn't max it out. I would take my additional money and put it elsewhere. <laughs> but if you're getting free money, and again, it's a timing thing. If, if uh, I can tell you, if you were in a 401k in the last five years, you've made some money. But if you didn't move it into something cash within the last, you know, before Two the weeks. last few days, <laughs> then uh, all that, a lot of that was wiped out. That's I right. mean, it's still ahead from the last five years, but it could easily drop away in no time. Well, still, is it better to match that? I mean, is well, it better not to even have that then? You know? Look, it's a very legitimate question and quote unquote free money, nothing's free by the way, but our right. employers making some <laughs> sort of contribution into it, it's probably not a bad thing, but yeah. it, it, it probably, it, it, that's a good thing. It's very much a good thing, you know, to get that, that additional contribution dollars. But the bigger issue is really, Exactly. How are you managing it? And, you know, most 401k plans don't let their employees take the money out while they're still working and in service. Right. And that's all part right. of the contrived system and so on and so <laughs> forth. But the bigger really issue. <laughs> well, look, you know, look, our employers don't want us to be too wealthy because we wouldn't work. Most people wouldn't live. work. That's right. You know, so, you know, when you actually get financially free and you can truly call your own shots and you're like, why would you do that? But, but yeah. the bigger issue is, is that you have to have your own life's purpose and you have to be able to clearly know what your why is and why are you doing things, you know, and, and my, you know, my why's for leaving corporate America are long, <laughs> very long yeah. list, you know, for a whole lot of reasons, but because it just didn't fit in with my life of, you know, living out here in Colorado and traveling freely across the world, you know, when I want to and truly being able to surround myself with the exact people I want surrounded right. myself. Exactly. You know, exactly. My, my immediate team here at Mile Marker Club are all hand picked, hand selected. Our masterminds, you know, you, I want to personally select who I'm around and nobody right. else. And I know that right. might sound a little bit selfish, but it's yeah. really important for our freedoms because sure. from an investor's perspective, then just making the decision to go to alternatives or some portion of your wealth into alternatives, you know, we get the, the, the educate, making that decision is kind of the first step of that. And then keeping mm -hmm. your, getting yourself and keeping yourself educated is another thing. But you know, I'm sure this happens to you guys all the time. It, it does with our own, in our own family of funds too. You know, Ryan, what should I invest in? And we're not investment advisors. We don't get, we're not registered investment advisors. We don't give investment advice. Right. What you have to understand mm -hmm. is what do you need and what works and necessary for you? And we've got, you know, right. some ways to do that through our own experiences and, you know, through the experiences of our other really sophisticated mile marker club members that we can benchmark against. But it's really as an investor being able to be educated and clear with your deal sponsors, what you need and why you need it, because then otherwise, every deal is going to look like a good deal. And it's the right. shiny object <clears throat> syndrome. Right. And it's frankly, at the end of this bull run, if we're not already there, both in the real estate and the alt space and the traditional markets, is that a lot of that wealth is going to evaporate because the investors that haven't kept themselves in school, so to speak, mm -hmm. and surrounded with the right community of other successful investors, they miss a key thing about selling high and buying low. That's right. <laughs> Duh. And, yeah. And, you know, we're not going to get into the whole thing of timing the market, but, you know, a classic example in real estate and Wendy and I've been talking about this for years too. I mean, we've all been buying real estate for, you know, nearly two decades now. Right. And especially for that, that we bought in 09, 010, mm. 2011, those were bargain basement prices of right. single family homes or multifamily or commercial, you know, whatever type of real estate, not all types of real estate, but you know, the kind of the, the classical, the single family homes. Well, here, fast forward a decade later to 2020, 
those properties, the market has given us significant appreciation oh, yeah. in those assets mm -hmm. and our rents while two have gone up, certainly haven't gone up at the same pace, right. you know, as a educated and well thought out and well planned in alternative investor, a lot of us have been selling those assets because right. yes, right. could it have kept going or could it keep going up? Yes. The reality of it is we're yeah. harvesting the gains and, you know, we've got other plans in place and there's right. nothing wrong with that. But most investors, especially in the traditional markets, you know, when we were talking about 401k plans there, they never sell. They watch the ride up and everyone gets excited. Oh, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep going. Well, we know <laughs> it's not. And That's right. But, but the same applies with alternative investments too. And you two deal with it in your funds. You know, if, if the market has given us some stuff beyond just our value add that we purposely set out to do with the asset, right. sometimes you've got to take those gains and not just watch it go the other direction. Right. And so I think, Bill, your, to your question about, you know, how do investors do that? They, they've got to be willing to take control and then they've right. got to be willing to, you know, architect a plan that gives them the clarity, that gives them the confidence mm -hmm. and gives them the can do this, especially when you're with a community of right. other investors who are also doing it and following a successful path and, you know, going against what the normal grain is. I forget the word you use there, Bill, but the, it's, going against the grain. Running with the herd. Yeah. Yeah, running with the herd. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you know, I guess we can all argue we all run with a herd too. We just run in a herd in a different direction. It's a better herd. <laughs> it's a better herd. You That's know, right. That's I, I right. I like too the way you talked about the shiny object syndrome that people have. And truly, you know, when you're looking at investments and it looks like it's too good to be true, it most likely is, you know, in that condo in Belize, may not be the best investment for you. You know, it sounds sexy, but you know, what's really going on there? It's, you, you gotta be realistic with what you're doing. Yeah. So some people, you know, they like these alternative investments, but they kind of get crazy with it. And they don't, they're not thinking, hey, if I lost this money, would it matter? You know, if you can invest in that and you, and the answer to that question is no, it wouldn't matter, then do it. <laughs> but it should matter. <laughs> well, that's right, Wendy. And there is, you know, that's back to having that plan and not just a cookie cutter stamp. Plan. Organized, like you said. Exactly. And knowing what you can withstand and seeing that. Well, what if I lose that? I mean, I, I like my, some of my venture capital stuff. It's, you know, I'm out there, it's risky, but some of it's just, you know, it's fun and it's interesting and you do that. Does, right. you know, is the core of my real estate portfolio and my income producing real estate portfolio still very much intact that keeps me financially free, keeps me sleeping very peacefully at night. Right. It, you know, <laughs> the, the, those cores are there. And, you know, right now with where we're at, it look, you know, deal sponsors, alternative investment deal sponsors come out of the woodwork yeah. all day long. Oh, yeah. And, our, you know, your guys's inbox, my inbox, our, you know, our respective investors or mile marker members inboxes are getting deluge, you know, just inundated right. with this. And it makes it look, you know, and, and in this day and age with the, you know, the Jobs Act that really changed a lot of the marketing rules back in 2013 has given rise to a lot of this. And for the, the, the investor that's really not connected to the right community, or truly working with great deal sponsors that get it, you know, like right. you guys do with, with your funds. They're just going, wow, that looks good. Those returns look good. Um, <laughs> let me right. just go do that without any degree of what an investment policy is, without really conducting due diligence, without most importantly, knowing who you're doing business with. You know, that stuff takes time. And, and right. when we're in this age and everyone's got a lot of capital, everyone's felt a lot of success, mm. we forget that, you know, sometimes we might make a wrong investment decision. I mean, I'm not right. perfect. And in my own IRAs, you know, I, you know, deals have not gone the way I thought they were going to. Right. And it's right. going to happen. And if, but if you don't go into this eyes wide open and have it planned for, you know, the things that aren't going to go right. Right. You, you will lose it. And yeah. that's a common, you know, element that 
you know, all of us as investors, again, no one cares more about our money than we do. And if you're not organized, you don't have a policy in place, you're, I know what the outcome is going to be. I know That's almost right. 99% right. certain what the outcome is going to be. And it's not the, ultimately the outcome that we've worked so hard, you know, for our money to create for ourselves. Right. Yeah. Right. Well said. And, you know, with, uh, with most of the funds that we're associated with, uh, the friends in our community, they are more focused on, you know, keeping that wealth, preserving mm -hmm. that capital than they are chasing yield. And it's funny you mentioned that with all the, I know, I know there's a, a, a reggae plus I hear advertised on satellite radio on a business news network. And every time I hear it, I cringe. If you're not making 18 to 21% return, you're missing out. And <laughs> you're blah, getting ready blah, to miss blah, a lot. I'm gonna, oh God. I wonder how many people are actually going to invest. They're in falling this for it. They and, do. And they might make 18 to 21% for a week for a little while. <laughs> But yeah, traditionally it doesn't last, does it? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, again, do, are those deals out there? They are out there. Could they be completely yeah. legitimate? They can be. Sure. It, sure. It's just how do you know what they are? And, you know, in the, in the worlds that we run in and the worlds that we all play in here, Bill, to your point, you know, when we're so focused on preservation and then, you know, the, you know, predictable income stream right. associated yeah. with our real estate asset classes, it may not look sexy, but you know what? My financial freedom doesn't need to be sexy. I That's just right. financially <laughs> free. <laughs> well, That's right. Singles, singles and doubles. You, yeah. If you swing to get on base, you will eventually hit a home run. If you're swinging for the, for the fence, for the home run, you're going to strike out a lot. Yeah. You're going to strike out a lot. Yeah. That's, that's, it, your, that, that's your capital rule right there. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. And again, it's not that I don't have some venture capital in my portfolio because I do. And I like my venture capital stuff, but it is <laughs> not my day-to-day, -day, you know, source of all of my income. And, and, and if it was, that'd be scary. Well, that's right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm good, but I ain't that good. <laughs> um, you know, with that, but do I like to, you know, have some exposure to it? I do. And there's also, you know, something to be said for, Re realizing that, you know, the higher the net worth we are, if you're in this kind of three to $30 million net worth space, to your point, Jonathan, um, you know, take a $5 million net worth portfolio. Well, 8%, a conservative 8% returns, nice. uh, you know, on a cash flowing real estate deals, whether that's notes, whether that's equity holdings, wherever, however the mix is that makes the most sense for you, that's a lot of money. I mean, and if it's compounded, I, it's even better than that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, having nearly almost 20 years now of working with very successful high net worth alternative investors, that has been the very common theme that we've ultimately seen. And, right. you know, I've got to watch it a little bit, you know, with my own family, certainly how I've embraced it myself. You know, it, this doesn't have to be a double digit return. We all like bragging about our double digit oh, yeah. return. Oh, yeah. Oh, when yeah. they actually happen, not just yeah. on some pro form or some email that says it's going to happen. <laughs> but the, the double digits are for show that consistency is for the dough right. and you know, right. that, that good, consistent, predictable return is that's where well the true said. financial freedom is at. And well so, said. you know, that's yeah. what we, you know, where we, where we like to, to hang yeah. out with and uh, co-underwrite and co-invest with, uh, with our members on, and you know, the, those deals that are, you know, make sense to our specification. And, you know, the last thing maybe I'll say about it here too is the communities that we're all a part of, and I'm not talking about the cities that we live in, I'm talking about our friends, our, the circles, our network, our network exactly, yeah. is really, really critical because I, I know for, you know, the, the sponsors that we work with here at Mile Marker Club and, you know, Bill and Wendy, you two have epitomized this as really creating and architecting your deals right. to your investors' right. specifications. Most time, and this is absolutely true in traditional investments, we have to take what they give us. And even right. in most alternatives, you know, the deal gets put in front of us, you got to take it or leave it. When you're involved in the right communities, the right circles, the right network, as investors, we get to have influence. 
Mm. And that's part of controlling your wealth and creating greater predictability of right. your financial freedom and the passive cash flows. And so, you know, that's a big thing that often gets overlooked because again, you know, deals have largely been good. The market has corrected the errors of, of a lot that's and that exactly won't happen. Right. Yeah, it won't happen forever. And so you want to be with solid quality deal sponsors that are open and talking and saying to their investors or their members, you know, what do we need now right. as we're going? Because what we need now as we sit here in Q1 2020, I can tell you is a heck of a lot different than what we needed even, you know, three years ago this time right. and what right. we were doing. And so that that's that's really an important part of not only getting to financial freedom, but staying financially free too. So if somebody wants to learn more, I'm sorry. I, I, about, I was going to say. I got it first. No, no, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we only have a few minutes left. I, we want to get it all in. Fund, uh, that you wanted to talk about just to kind of the space it is before we, we get out of here. And we want to hear sure. about the, the mile marker club. Sure, so absolutely. Learn more about that. So, well, th thank you too. I just, I love being able to talk with you. And I guess I suppose maybe some people want to know, you know, and the man manners that we actually do all of this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, what we've really, what we've really strive for, we've got, you know, I've got a great, great team of fellow fund managers, you know, that we work with today between, you know, uh, Colonial Capital Management with our good friend, Eddie Speed, who we all know, mm -hmm. Mike Zlotnick with Tempo is really what we've been striving to do these last several years is bringing what we call a family of funds mm -hmm. concept to our investors and our mile marker club members. So it's really rooted in, you know, one of our funds, the Heritage Multi-Sector Fund is really rooted in income-based alternative, uh, primarily real estate related assets. So, you know, performing rental properties, performing right. secured loans, to our opportunity, or excuse me, more of a blend fund that combines those income, similar types of income deals, but with a high growth deal, long-term deals like, a, you know, maybe some ground up like self-storage or that type of thing to a true growth fund that's really doing, you know, large rehabs, longer term growth oriented projects. And, and that's, you know, part of what you know, our family of funds now are really designed to do today, Bill. And as we're, you know, we're constantly evolving again to meet the needs of our investors, you know, given the market conditions we have to work with. And right. so th those are, you know, the Heritage Multi-Sector Fund one, the new Tempo Growth Fund, I think, Bill, is what you were referring there to, yes. to allow that investor who likes funds as an access point. It's not for everyone, but the right. fund is a, is a strong access point to get access to several deals and, you know, a nice diversified manner. So uh, that growth fund has been the kind of helping us to round out that portfolio and the family of funds. And, and really the, the mile marker club side of the house is about that wealth education, about that training. And then, you know, for those members that want to go a little bit deeper and plug in with us, from a strategy, um, the coaching, and really providing the tools to help you be your own best wealth and manager and your own best wealth advisor right. is really where Mile Marker Club focuses on the needs of that and, and helping its members, like I say, stay financially free through strong analytics, through strong financial plans rooted in, you know, in the experience of other high net worth families that have been really experienced. With right. That. So right. Those are kind right. Of the, well, how would you like to be contacted? Yeah. What's the best way to get in touch? Uh, I appreciate that gang. Uh, you know, our websites are probably the best way. Milemarkerclub.com okay. is to go out and uh, take a peek at our website. Uh, you can see a little bit more what we do on our deal flow side at heritagecapitalusa.com. Heritage side of the house is more of our deal flow and our deal architecture side. Mile Marker Club is more of our wealth strategy side. So our websites are probably uh, the, a great place for someone to start if they're interested in awesome. uh, learning more. Yeah, well, awesome. we'll, we'll have links uh, already in place for, for the viewers. Ryan, thank you so much for all your time, bud. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you to what you are all doing to constantly be educating and talking about the, the, the vast world of alternative investments. It's, uh, I'm grateful for the relationship with the two of you. I'm grateful for how serious you take you know, the management of other people's money. And it's, it's really impressive what you two do 
how your entire organization does that. And I'm just, I'm grateful to be a part of your circle and to, to help out and, and serve your investors however I can. Well, we better get his yeah, check in the yeah. mail right away. Back at you, buddy. <laughs> that <was very> nice. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so uh, much. Listen, have a great day. Thank you, folks, for joining us on our show. Uh, we'll have another one coming up in about 10 minutes. Remember. <laughs> anyway, remember to share, like, subscribe, yeah. thumbs up. And then uh, carolinahardmoney.com is the website for us. Have a wonderful day. Thank Thanks. you. Hey, thanks so much for joining us this time. And if you really like this show, you'll have an opportunity to see even more. You can choose up here. You can choose over here. You can choose down here, right? Awesome. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our page. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.